Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Hewlett Packard. 8412A face magnitude display. It is in a little bit of a sad state. As you can see, I miss this nice plastic around the screen and it looks like it's been thrown in a trash can so the idea with this product is you connect it to your network analyzer spectrum analyzer and stuff like that the real real old kind of stuff and then this one can add an additional display that will show you a lot of uh, extra things it's of course all analog it is from the good old analog interface days. So the reason why I scored this one was I was hoping I could use this as a really cool XY interface or a display for all sorts of uh, cool projects. So let's see if I'm able to power this up. A little fast inspection shows some really deep nasty dents and look at that one. Oh, and it's very close to the CRT here. So it's something is maybe broken inside. It's the rear of this unit. As you see, we got a lot of BNC connectors for analog interfacing. And uh, probably also thinks, where is the power supply connector? And that is that one so that is the interface for your mainframe or your main unit or your spectrum analyzer vector analyzer whatever kind of unit this one is interfacing this is a, a kind of medium low voltage interface but there is a i think it's plus minus 20 volts 6 volts and a 137 volts of ac in this connector so hmm that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. That is a beautiful unit. But of course it was stored wrong. Look at that. All that corrosion. That tells me it was more or less outside in the rain. Oh no, I have to clean this. By the way, this dust is more or less electrically conductive. So you don't want this to go in all sorts of high voltage stuff. And here we go with really, really... Oh, they are beautiful. But there's a screw missing, so this tells me somebody was in here. But that is so beautiful. That is the main transformer, I guess. Where they just put some rectifier diodes right there just to... Easy, easy, make some voltage. So that'll be all the connectors for all the plug-in modules. Let's uh, roll it around. And this is the bottom. Classic HP, super, super quality. Wow, that is so nice. We got, what is that? Two missing no they are in there so that is perfectly fine okay good i like this naming of all the different modules and what do you know isn't that just pretty so i think if you stick this in here you'll be able to take each of the boards and then stick it up here and then be able to measure from all sides probably they angled it it like this to make it even easier to access how cute and this is not the first time we see this on HP or Tektronics and stuff like that this is a good good way to do it so we've got what? amplitude phase channel low voltage power supply DC amplitude kind of things they aren't screwed in or anything we can just pull them out and here is the left side we'll see some uh, okay vertical 
deflection what's probably what we see here right what is that little piece of hmm maybe some stuff that's supposed to be here see that is this nasty nasty dent it's almost touching the crt got some more of this nasty corrosion not so good that will be the last this is top face offset and face detector i guess i don't need any of that kind of stuff i only need the two deflections and the high voltage so the first task will be to clean it up a little bit see if i can get all this nastiness out of it and see if i can figure out the the power supply entry connector and kind of stuff the manual is really really bad when it comes to that connector so i'm a little bit lost oh, i'm not done with my inspection round so that will be the two lids for the high voltage They're just even those are just super super nice but look here on the inside this reveals a little bit of a kaboom and that will be the high voltage power supply and that will be the high voltage transformer We've got some diodes and some capacitors and some more nasty stuff but it's only running at like two or three kilo volts right so, so why is it all so super nice but what is that i don't know if i like what i see here that is not a nice color isn't it this looks like fungus or melted down some nasty stuff oh, i need to look much deeper into the documentation before i power this up this can't be good Ooh. so it's Is this some crappy crap? Maybe I should just lick this and see what it tastes like. This is just beautiful. I am inspecting the different PCBs and looking for details that need my attention. But the gold plated PCBs like this, they just really last forever. But the backside is not gold plated, that's tinned. What have we got here? A lot of different op amps and stuff. So that's a DC amplitude. Okay, so that explains that. Footprint is made for several different types of op amps. I tried to clean those two components. But I can't still figure out exactly what it is. A resistor or a capacitor or something like that. I think it is a resistor part. I'll have to look a little bit into the documentation. So that is the high voltage transformer. We only got two diodes. And by oops, by looking at the the way this this is made, it is clearly super duper tip top so that will be high voltage windings and those two are also high voltage windings and then we've got four low voltage stuff and if we look carefully on all the windings here we can see it's this classic winding technique where each layer goes zigzag zigzag so there's as little as possible um, capacitive coupling between the different layers and that means this uh, transformer is uh, going to work very well at uh, very high frequencies. The reason why I took this up was because I saw some stuff underneath here and then that turns out just to be a capacitor hidden down there and that will be our main entry transformer let's put this back somehow very 
very special screws for this. So here is the high voltage power supply. We're actually supposed to rotate it this way. And we found the manual with schematics and all that kind of stuff. And yes, that's actually resistors, those two. R37 and R28 is what they're called. So I need to take them out and measure them because they were just totally full of funkers and stuff. How is that possible to grow all sorts of living creatures on top of my components? I'm looking a little bit in the schematics and um, here is R28 marked with the red circle. So that is intensity uh, voltage divider or discharge kind of circuit for the... Um, yeah, I think there's like 3000 volts on this intensity um, setup, right? And then on the next page, I find R37. So that's also um, 29 meg. And that is in series with the focus pot meter. So that is how that works. So uh, that is good luck. Those two resistors are exactly the same, 29 meg. So I need to um, desolder them, clean them up super duper nice, and then measure if they are still... 29 meg. Let's try and measure those resistors. So I took them out and I cleaned them with the alcohol real careful. But 6 mega ohm, that is one of them. Let me just leave the wires hanging so I'm not touching. Let's see the other one. That one looks actually a little bit weird. Look at that. And if I just leave here, see the Mega ohms just go like that. But this tells me this is a really bad component. To show you, it's not my ohm meter that is defect. I just took a 100 mega ohm resistor and put on, and it's about 100 mega ohms, right? And it's quite stable. So, I mean, I can clearly say that I'm able to measure this kind of stuff. And the two resistors I test, they are not working. I just wanted to see how those resistors they were made, so I took them totally to bits. It's actually a ceramic tube with a thread inside and some metal at the ends. And then we got those ends you screw in, and then it creates contacts with them metal added on the ends. And then on the outside they added this carp on track and then they carefully laser trimmed it or mechanically trimmed it all the way around like that you can actually see it's been machined and then it was coated with some stuff and added some nice text and then added some heat shrink but they forgot to add some I don't know some sort of a glue or something at the end so moisture just got in here and also this type of plastic yeah you could just farm all sorts of bacteria on that this kind of plastic for whatever funny reason by the way so why is that possible on this piece of plastic and not on anything else I don't know so I just put in some 10 mega ohm resistors like that so I got 30 instead of 29 so that just means I need to trim a little bit on intensity and a little bit on focus but that means I will be able to carry on and meanwhile I was also looking in the manual about not that end but that end so I finally found the pinout for this connector and it's 175 volts of AC but it is relative to chassis so I can't just take my normal vario and uh, give it the right voltage no I need to separate it and then connect one of them to chassis and then it's of course plus minus 20 as well but now I got the pinout so 
I should be able to power this up real soon. Stay tuned. So I am still in the progress of trying to power this thing up. And that is definitely the connector we are talking about. And I found this in the manual. But if we look a little bit more careful about this, is that the pins they're referring to in this connector or is it the other end of the connector? Because I'm getting a little bit confused here. Is this really, how is this? Because pin 21 was supposed to be chassis, right? And pin five was also supposed to be chassis. So that means if I can beep these two, then I know how to count this. And I'm reading the numbers that is written on this blue connector. And indeed, pin 5 is connected to chassis. So that was fine, right? But then I go down here to 21 and 20. But the 21 is not connected to chassis. So that is not going to be good or what? So this is going to be the moment of truth or destruction i'm using a super super isolation transformer here so that'll be super safe to do just uh crank up to 175 and let's give it uh, the plus minus 20 volts at the same time What have we got here? So 175. That is it. Mm, intensity is here. There isn't even a, an LED that shows if it's on or off. I don't know what else we need to do. Maybe there's nothing going on. What we could do is measure a few of the voltages in here and see if it's alive. Let's look a little bit here what it says. Low voltage power supply. I measure 140 here, so that's also a high voltage power supply here as well, but it also says six volts adjust. And that one measures six volts. And also that board, it's really, really difficult to read, but it says here 4.6 volts, and that is the entire ground plane on that one, or power plane. So that's also okay. So I guess it is actually powered up, but what I think is happening here is a blanking. So there's definitely a missing signal, and that is probably like if you don't connect anything, it's going to be blanked. So that is my next move. The challenge here is just up a little level because first of all, the manual is so bad. As you can see here, I need to draw the connector. That one was well, just completely missing. But also, some of the transistors here, they're not uh, located the same place and some are missing and all that kind of stuff so that means what I got here this documentation is not exactly the same version however all the other inputs and stuff like that up here it's located the same place and and of course the connector must be compatible right so so here's the the connector I've added and added all the numbers and uh, the schematic I stitched this schematic from four pages so I could print it out in uh, one easy go so it's a little bit easier to sit and fool around with if you let me have it here if you look at the numbers on the schematic like this seven four and so on so that's actually the color codes of the wires so it's super easy to figure out where are you and what's going on so this is pin number one purple okay minus 20 
And when I measure here, I don't have minus 20. So I got a missing voltage. And of course I got most of the other voltages all over the place and, and all those are right. But that is needed to get the oscillator up and running. So there's definitely some enable, disable, or maybe maybe I need to short um, two connections uh, in, the, in the blue connector back there. So yeah, it's not easy. Oh, look at that. Yabba yabba you. I call this a winner. We got a little dot and focus seems to be working as well. Let me crank it down so it's just barely visible. So let me show you what I did. I traced the missing 20 volts, a positive and negative, back to the blue connector, exactly as I thought. And of course, if I connect the missing signals like this, then we got all the missing voltages on the power supply. And this I cannot find in the documentation I got. So here you have it for your free of charge use. So I'm about to assemble the power supply because now I only need to play with deflection and it's better to have those uh, shields back on. And uh, remember my repair with those tiny little resistors but okay, I'm using three of them in series and all that kind of stuff. But they're not really getting that warm. It's only 50 Celsius. So I think we are kind of home free and I don't see any other kind of things to be worried about. So it's all perfectly fine, this repair. Uh, one of my friends actually said he got the schematic for this, the right version of this deflection board. Because it turns out the A and the B versions of uh, many of the boards in this unit, they are very, very different from A to B version. And the, this is the B version documentation, and this is the A version board, and it's just completely different. And... Uh, so yeah, while I'm waiting for that, I've been looking a little bit more on the quality level of this um, unit. And you see here, it's all very badly corroded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it all apart and see if I can get in here and clean it up a little bit more. You see all that gross stuff here. So I'm going to take off, off the front plate here and see what, what I can do. So that was not too difficult. I also took off this plastic here needs to be cleaned. Look at the back side of that piece of aluminium. It is really badly, badly corroded. And that is of course the back side underneath the, the front. All the switches like this and then there's this little switch by the way this one i can't really move so that's probably also corroded and those two switches here and oh man but now i can clean the screen so that is good haha -ha, my first blue crt with green afterglow really really nice I feel it's going to be a good day today because look at that. I got the right schematic. The right A version in a super good quality. So look at that schematic. Now I know what I'm doing. So the idea is to build this into a really nice XY scope. So of course I need to disable the chop multiplexer and only use one of the inputs. I also need to remove some of all that stuff, enable one of them and this blanking stuff, I don't need that as well. And uh, that should be about it, right? So all this was of course correct. 
I am playing a little bit with horizontal position, as you can see here. Oh, let me give you a little bit more brightness. So this is horizontal position uh, with almost no input or no input. But if I crank up the input like that, it is it is okay. But I, I really would like to be able to move the horizontal also to the other side. But I can only move it to this side, right? So here is the problem. The horizontal position part only goes with positive 6 volts and then it goes to ground. And my sweep input, I want I want all, both my inputs to be 0 volt centered. So that means this is only the gain. So that must be 0 volt in here and 0 volt DC here. Okay? Only signal. And then I need to be able to push or pull my offset on the other transistor like that. So, what I came up with is the side of that transistor here, uh, pop meter obviously, right? So that side here is positive and the black wire is ground. But there is no negative 6 volts in this area, but it is available in this connector and I don't need any of those plug-in boards anyway. So. I will just take a little wire here and put it to that pot and that should solve that problem. Oh, by the way, did I did I show all the other changes I did to this uh, schematic? I marked with a little green line over all the parts that I removed. And uh, here I changed a little bit in the zero position. See, here we got plus minus 6 volts on that um, position part but that resistor of course is a problem I think that we got other resistors here because when I crank this all the way to the end I don't get full voltage anyway and it should have been like that so I think this this part is limited from going all the way to the ends by the way but changing this value from 100 to uh, 1k now I got plenty of adjustments that way and my input impedance is uh, now a little bit higher. I put in t uh, 10k here and it's still 0 volts DC. I got uh, full deflection at about 3 volts. I, I left the input filter here so all that is uh, okay. That took a little while to figure out about the horizontal position knob here. See, now it's much less aggressive. See, I'm, this is maximum. And this is all, here we go, almost. And this is my gain, of course. And what I did is, of course I put this negative voltage on this pot meter, but it only went to zero before, right? And so, and I want zero here. And all that is fine. So I simply attenuated the position from this knob. And uh, by the way, this took me a little while to figure out because it was doing exactly uh, wrong stuff instead of uh, good stuff here. It turns out the schematic here is not correct. These two inputs, they're not like this, but it's the opposite. So you can imagine what happens when I poke around with stuff here. It's actually in the input signal path and not the offset. So it was doing all sorts of wrong stuff. And it took me a little while to figure that out. But okay, schematic is wrong. Okay. So I think I will call this video a success on end of this uh, little project here. I'm trying to see if I can change the shutter time it's really weird uh, to take a picture of this because the afterglow or the 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 blue the blue phosphor is really really fast and the green afterglow is very very slow so that is why it looks really weird on a camera but with my eyes it's just blue and super nice so I'll call this the end it was a big success, so thank you very much for watching, bye bye!